Real quick guys, before I start the actual video, I want to show you, I only have one rifle in this double rifle case. So if you have any ideas, watch to the end of the video. I have some uh, questions I have to ask you guys and some ideas of what I've had been thinking about what to put in here. So please let me know what you think. So this rifle isn't lonely in its case. <laughs> Hey guys, wanted to give you a last update on my Ruger 5.56 patrol rifle. Uh, it's finally finished, which means I can move on to my next product project. I mean, and uh, and put this one put this one to rest and stop buying parts for it. So completed product. Just want to show you. I traded out the stock um, adjustable butt stock for a Magpul version. That's, you can see that in the first video I posted. Um, the Magpul hand grip, the MOE, is still here, and as is the Magpul slimline hand guard up front. So those are all great. The only change I've made is uh, I changed out the, the bottom compartment for one that holds a set of batteries for the EOTech. Um, as you guys remember, the single sling attachment with the stake castle nut now. Uh, I do have a polymer dust cover coming, but that was a you know that's a pretty small detail. I wasn't gonna wait another week for that just to just to show you guys that. Um, the major two changes I've made since my initial video are the Raptor ambidextrous charging handle. This thing is amazing. Let me just tell you. And if you ever played, I think it's Call of Duty. Modern Warfare 2 or anyway, it's one of those you can actually see they one of the ARs in the in the game has this charging handle Now what it is I'm gonna rack it here and show you You can see that when the when the charging handle is pulled it allows both Both sides to operate together as a butterfly obviously if you do it from the right just that one comes, or excuse me, the left, and if you do it from the right, both of them come. Extremely nice charging handles. Um, I've had one, I put one on my last rifle, put one on this rifle. They are about $90, but well worth it, I think. Um, I'll post an Amazon link for you guys below. The other major change is I traded out the, um, the rear flip-up sight because the stock Ruger polymer flip-up sight is pretty similar to the Magpul version. However, it doesn't have, usually on a rear sight, you have a large sight aperture for close range, which you can then flip to a smaller sight aperture for longer distance. The Ruger version doesn't come with that. See the difference between there and there? The Ruger version does not come with that. So we traded it out for the Troy Industries folding battle site. Um, these are really nice as well, very high quality. It's not spring loaded. I know it's got the button here, but it's not spring loaded. You do have to flip it up. However, it does lock in the up position. To release it, you press that button on the side and push it back down. Very high quality site. Again, they are about $100 as well, so you know, you're looking at getting into some money, but you know, the way I look at it is I'd rather have something that works than, than not. The final change you probably noticed if uh, you watch my other videos is the EOTech 512. I decided not to go for the night vision version. I also decided not to go for the uh, version that has the CR123 batteries. This one carries AA batteries. Uh, the reason for that is, I am probably going to take this rifle to Kuwait with me. I'm uh, probably going to take a leave of absence from work here and probably take this rifle with me to Kuwait and uh, obviously in other countries and things of that sort, AA batteries are a lot easier to find than CR123s. Um, those other countries don't really have you know, flashlights and tactical things like this that we have available to us so they don't generally have them available. I was in the UK for a year 
previously and I don't think I met a single person there that knew what a CR123 battery was. So um, if you get some of the, I ordered some of the Duracell Ultimate Lithium Ion batteries to go with this. Uh, they have a thousand hour life use. So like I said, you can throw two in here, throw two in the bottom of the mag well, and uh, I'm hoping I should be good to go with that. As you can see the red dot through there, I don't think it'll focus on that too well, but you can see the red dot. The reason I like the EOTEX is they're uh, holographic sights. So, you know, you see, no matter where you move the sight and what angle you're looking at the sight from, you know that where that red dot is, is where the bullet's gonna hit. The thing I like about the EOTEX over the aim points is uh, generally just the look of them. I, I like the, the sight picture and the uh, the range of view there. How EOTEX work is to turn them on. If you press the down button, it'll turn on and turn off in four hours. If you press the up button, it'll turn off in eight hours. And what those buttons do is they simply change the brightness level. And then if you want to uh, turn it off, you just hold both of those down at the same time until it turns off. Then on the reverse side of the EOTEX, you have the windage and adjustments here to uh, get your zero correct. Uh, like I said, they're adjustable with either a pan or a quarter or a, or a flathead screwdriver. Can't quite do it with your finger. Um, anyway, so these are the upgrades. Like I said, uh, I gotta get this zeroed. Zero your iron sight separately. What you'll do to zero is if you get a target like this, you'll aim three shots right here at center mass. And depending on where you actually hit, it'll give you uh, directives as to where you should or what adjustments you should be making to to bring that sight center mass. I highly recommend the 25 300 meter zero as uh, I just think it's the most common and uh, it's the most effective. Remember you need to you need to zero your backup sights separately from your optic and if you need to use your backup sights you look through the optic called in a co-witnessing it's called co-witnessing and maybe I'll do a video about that at a later time. Bad news about this rifle. I do have some unfortunate news. Um, I have a 5.11 double rifle case. However, this is the only rifle that fits in it. My other rifle and my shotgun are both too long to fit in it. That means I have room for another rifle or some kind of long gun. It has to be under 36 inches or collapsible to under 36 inches to fit in the case. So I'd love to hear some suggestions about what you guys think should go in there. I've been considering a um, 308 long range rifle. I'll put a picture of it right now for you to see. I've also been considering another AR and setting it up as a designated marksman rifle. So it'll be a 5.56 like this. However, it'll have a long range scope on it. Um, Kind of like a, like a hunting style scope but with a ma with magnification so i have this one set up for close quarter battle and patrol use and then i'll have a long range ar set up as well i'd love to hear you guys' recommendations because i've been going back and forth killing myself about what to buy next to fit in that case hey thanks again for watching if you have any questions comments um or whatever you want to tell me to go fuck myself uh please leave the comments below it shows me that you guys appreciate and you know enjoy what i'm doing and i'd love to hear from you guys thanks a lot